Are you happier in Florida? It feels less crazy. Here you just- Florida's like, less crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out on this. This is the kind of stuff, and I- Oh my I, God. I, <laughs> that I'm that, sitting with my daughter, and I'm like- this I, is I needed a trigger warning for that piece of information. No, really. I, you know, if I could say one thing that I've wanted to thank you for, for probably four years now. <laughs> what am I doing? When the whole situation happened where I said I did not celebrate Lizzo being obese because I would hate for her to get diabetes. Right. Not only did no one say anything in the, in the public eye, right? At all behind the scenes, like, totally agree, wink, wink. You were the <laughs> only person well, who like, had my back. Sounds like me. You went on Rogan and you're like, did you see this? Jillian Michael said, this is crazy. And I was like. Well, you know, honey, <sighs> I've been raked over the coals even more than you perhaps. I'm sure. For, the, for that issue. Do you, you, you must have been aware of that James Corden feud. I right? know a little bit about it. I know oh. a little bit about it. Refresh my memory. But he's. Oh, well, he, he's I did an editorial about right? obesity and he, he, you know, was like painted me as mean man wow. and and of course you know it was all things that were true no <laughs> no, no, no cheap shots of course not forgive well, I mean, me no you I could mean, i mean i certainly uh, <sighs> too small for your chair there we go go on reading submissions of them but i didn't no i i wanted to avoid that but it was you know a frank discussion of, I think it started with the, I think it was during the 20, no, the 18 campaign, and they were all talking about healthcare, and I said, you know, it started with no healthcare program, nobody's, not Bernie, not Hillary, not nobody's healthcare is going to work unless the people participate in being healthy, and that Americans just basically flat out refuse, of course, we're all individuals, many do not, but just as a society, I feel like they just no, and I certainly have done it with drinking and drugs. You know, I didn't do it with food, but I'm not better. I'm just different. You know, I did it for too long. I've had way too much uh, liquor in my life. Not anymore, really. Would you like a drink? I'm going to have one. Here's the problem. <laughs> but I would moderate. normally have one, but I don't think I can keep up with you on my daughter's ADD medication <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with you five drinks in. So I've had a double espresso just to try to play Tung Fu with you for 90 minutes. Wait, so that's your drug coffee? Yeah, caffeine, 100%. I must say, like I spent the first 45 years of my life indifferent to coffee. And like, then you, at a certain point, it, you understand, you, you, first of all, you understand why as a kid, you had no interest in it because you're bouncing off the walls anyway. Absolutely, yes, 100%. <laughs> then you get older and it's like, you know, yeah, you need your little... It's a tool for me. I use it strategically with regard to fitness. Even now, speaking to you, it allows me to access my vocabulary more effectively. Because some days it's like... But do like, you do it all day? I do 200 milligrams, about 30 Milligram. minutes. You don't drink it? I do, but I know exactly how much is in the cup. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> so, okay, so I have one cup. A healthy one, but one. Is for, it organic? Yeah, I think so. Perfect. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? It does matter. I mean. Annoying. Oh, of course it does. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, the word organic is under assault. So, like, when they say organic, was I out there with Juan Valdez? I mean, did did somewhere along the line the Houthi pirates you know, switch this up with, uh, who knows, you know, shit that comes all the way from around the world and like really nobody along the way, we see all these caravans of desperate migrants, nobody along the way uh, fucked with anything, I don't know. But it's so, mitigating the chemical load, that, at least that, somewhat. I think we both believe health, you have to win on the molecular level. Yeah. And that's hard to do. In this, in the world we live in, for many women, I mean, we're not out there picking our own food. We got to trust other people, and I don't. <laughs> and even even when you try the hardest to keep things clean, it's just not a clean um, world. I mean, America causes cancer. True. However, if you think about it as a total toxic load, if you can mitigate it effectively. Here, there, green laundry detergent. 
potentially right, less exactly. chemicals in your coffee. You said it. You, it, you, know, you mitigate it. That's you all mitigate you, it as best you can. As best you can. Well, of course you can do anything. I mean, there's something like 50,000, I think. I may be way off on this, but I think I read that somewhere. New chemicals or chemicals that hadn't been around. Darren Olean talks about this. He has a whole hundred years ago. Is that around the right figure? It's something astronomical it's some, to the yes. point that you check out of the number, but it's obscene. Well, and of course, maybe hundreds of them are just slight variations on the same one and shit like that. You know, I mean, there's ways to manipulate. The one is actually enough to cause cancer. But so. the, po the point <laughs> is, things are not au naturel as they once were. No. But we also have antibiotic. I mean, look, on, on balance, it's better. We live longer than when you died because you got a splinter. Absolutely true. You know, I mean, I'm glad there's antibiotics in the world. I just don't want to have to take them. But that's everything with health and medicine, right? There's a cost-benefit analysis to everything. So, you know, I always tell my kids, listen, <laughs> if you come down with MRSA, we are going to the hospital and I'm going to put right. Cipro in every orifice of your body. But, okay. you know, we're not going to prophylactically treat a cough with antibiotics for all of the following reasons and all the negative side effects. Everything with this stuff is a cost benefit analysis, right. medication, vaccines, all of those things health related. You know, we all are, are the same, made of the same shit. But it's so obvious that we just have these variations, which is one reason why I think we're on the same page about vaccines and stuff. Not an anti-vaxxer, but like Me everything should be on a case by case because I'm so different than you. It's, you know? it's also a question of what's necessary. So, for example, you know, a lot of people have opinions about RFK. I'm going to stay on this point here right. and not go off piece. But when he talks about giving kindergartners a hepatitis B vaccine, which is for drug users and people who have risky sex. Wait, who's RFK? Um, Robert Kennedy Jr. He must be against this. He's against giving six-year-old uh, yeah. kindergartners. <laughs> exactly. So when he talks about the fact that Big Pharma was like, how are we going to recoup our money that we put in developing this vaccine? Let's get it mandated for five-year-olds Really? Because, of course, every vaccine is going to have side effects. They just do. Now, polio, yes. measles, every 100%. Hepatitis B for a kindergartner? Well, some, no fucking way. Sometimes, uh, I mean, every medical intervention has <clears throat> side effects of some kind or else it wouldn't work. You know, it's moving something around in True. you. That's what I'm always saying to the people who argue with me about this is I just feel like they're overconfident of how much they think we know. When I say we, I mean humans at this moment in history. Yeah. And we just don't know that much. So what are the confluence of <sighs> things that could be involved in this certain outcome, many of which we don't know? Why, you know, cancer? Until we like solve that big one, oh, like so the worst, <laughs> most awful one. We don't have a handle on that yet. But everything else, I'm just going to go. Okay, well, you you must know. You know, <laughs> you, you know some stuff. You and we certainly know more than we did. We know more every day. I mean, how much of that knowledge also gets down to the level of whoever's treating you? That's another story. You know, I mean, and yeah. that's the thing. Another one of my big points is doctors disagree. Like, why are your doctors better than my doctors? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what there's are lots the of doctors as who well. dissent, right? Yeah. And I there's, mean, there's, listen, I deal with a lot of doctors all the time and interview it, them regularly. Right. My books, my podcast. That said, there is a certain type of training that doctors are given. And generally, people come to them after already becoming sick. Right. So the question becomes, what are we going to do about your diabetes? Okay, let's throw this drug at it. Let's throw that drug at it. And it becomes whack-a-mole because each drug creates a side effect that needs another drug. And by the time you're right. 60 years old, you're on 12 different medications. None of them carrying any of the problems right. they were designed for. I, I rarely contest people when they say, Oh, this does what it's supposed to. Yeah, it does what it's supposed to. Vaccines generally do what they're supposed to. Antibiotics do what they're supposed to. Uh, chemotherapy does what it's supposed to. I'm interested in what else does it do. Yeah. And you are the first person who I've heard of who is now, I've heard nothing but encomiums about Ozempic. Yeah. But 
I trust that you've done the research. What What is your... Yeah, so so the first thing is you don't need to trust me because I, I am not transacting in opinions. Right, right. So I am simply outlining the facts for people, encouraging you to Google it, do your own homework on the things right. that I say, right. and then make the decision for yourself. Right. So I want to back into this one and give you our best case scenario. Instead of being like, ah, and then your, your butt's gonna fall off your body. Okay, let's back into it. You are one of the 50% that has zero side effects. I feel great, never felt better. So that's it, 50% has zero side effects? At least 50% are gonna have gastrointestinal issues. Vomiting, constipation, okay, diarrhea, sure. and then right. it gets more nefarious. But I'm, I'm okay. backing into it, you know, right. from the from the sunlight here, right? Okay. Before we get into stomach paralysis, intestinal blockage, and pancreatitis. So those filling. are other. Side oh, that's a whole other shit. I'm not, I haven't even gone there yet for we'll you. We'll go there. We're going the best. First, I'm going to tell you what your best case is. Oh, I feel great. I have I have no symptoms. Amazing. Right. I've lost a ton of weight. Right. Amazing. Okay. Now we're 18 months into it, and you will plateau. It's not a question. Right. It's not my opinion. Sure. It's fact. Hashtag let me Google that for you, right? Yes. So now you've plateaued. Another thing I think people, just sorry to interject, but people sometimes don't know is that many drugs have, we would call it in politics, a sunset clause, like they end. Like I know someone who's on, you know, they have a pill for lung cancer. And it does amazing things, but it does sunset. The body it, is it does static. St it does stop working at some point. It, for that reason, right? The body is like, oh, we've right. been doing this exogenously, so I'm going to make some endogenous adjustments. Right. And you will find homeostasis. Right. Not a question. So now you have a plateau and right. it stops working. Right. Okay, well, you can't get off of it ever. And all of the meta analysis, all of them, show that you will gain all of the weight back, two thirds within the first year alone, and then some hashtag quote devastating weight regain rebound. Yo-yo dieting on crack. I can tell you all the mechanisms for which so this wh is happening. So why, why isn't this being talked about more? Why are you, and this one you're the pioneer getting. Yeah, here's the problem. All of the doctors quietly that I work with on the DL feed me the information, but the problem is, some of them are at Stanford, some of them are sure. at Harvard. No, no, they it's, get it's, grant money from these companies. No, and also, people uh, the, people are such sheep. And once this became like the miracle drug, you know, I call it the one true opinion, then that becomes anointed as the one true opinion. And a lot of media is in the pocket. You know, I used to do 65 bits in- 65% well, funded by Big Pharma. I used to do a bit in my act about the evening news that uh, it was very funny, I wish I could remember it, but it was basically that every, it's not the news that made me want to kill myself every night. It was the commercials. Everything was people who I can't shit, I can't, okay. I can't, I can't but you breathe. Know that I that can't. commercial? All ads for pharmaceutical- the narrative though, Bill. But pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical drugs, Fund funded the night. I don't know Higher if they still thing. do. Top sixty five percent. You know, restless of the leg dollars. syndrome 100%. and fucking you know. Hundred percent. Pills that you you don't even know what they're selling. It's just some chick in a wheat field, like, and she's like, she looks happy, and it's like, get this shit, you'll be happier. Okay, but here's what they're actually buying. They're buying the episode of sixty minutes where Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford, who's a paid right. spokesperson for Novo Nordisk is parroting research paid for by Novo Nordisk, and the anchor is like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, oh. No, it, I mean. The, it, it, it's insanity. Again, it's It's like a commercial very, for the drug. What I was saying before, people are scared. This is a subject that scares them. They want to believe the people in the white coats are pure, and they have the answers, and they couldn't be corrupt, and. It, they spend it's, tens yes. of millions and it's a buying business. doctors. It people, is. unhealthy people is also a business. I'm not saying that they're twirling their mustache and flaunting their cape and Bill, just plotting to this it's specifically. It's got a compound annual growth rate of yeah, 9% just, as an industry. Can I strongly recommend? Do you recommend think they have cures that they don't tell us about? Cures for things like herpes, yes. Really? You think well, there's a herpes cure and they don't Let's tell us? Let's think about this for a second, Because they're we? selling so much of whatever. So much Zovorax. But who's, I, I find that hard to believe, really? actually. Really, they've got a vaccine, not cures, but vaccines. They've got a vaccine for chickenpox. 
They've got a vaccine for shingles. Right. They've got a vaccine for that's HPV. A, that's the same thing. Why don't you have a vaccine for herpes? Because herpes. Oh, right. It's a. It's the same. Vi- it's a, It's a, Well, it's a similar one. It's a similar. Exactly. Shingles and chickenpox are the same virus. It, herpes that people get outbreaks on their face. That's that's. Simplex too, I think. I don't I know. even remember, but I, I don't I, I, I'm pretty sure if you can come up with that, right? And you can come up with a COVID vaccine in nine so, months. So you like, can handle how, this. But one how do you the actually day. suppress that? How do you? I mean, Who's and, and for why the would? Research? And why would you? Because wouldn't you make a fortune selling the cure for herpes? I think you would. So I, really? I, I yeah. I think so. I, so I think they what they catch them like what they caught the Sackler family and they got something like an eight billion dollar fine for selling the for pushing opioids for pulling OxyContin. Okay, but it was it was sort of out in the open what they were doing. It, it wasn't, went on for decades and the right. doctors didn't stop prescribing it. Right. But I don't think they have a cure for cancer because I think it would be Cancer, no way. It's right. so complicated. It's so complicated. It's a bit of a different right. beast. Right. Is there a cure for obesity? Obesity is multifactorial. So let's play the downsides of Ozempic. Now I gave you your rosy scenario and here's the problem. It will plateau. Right. And you can never get off of it, or you'll have a horrendous rebound. So where do you net out in your best case scenario? You're going to be in the same position if I put you in a time capsule, and I got you three, four, five years down the road. We're going to be right back where we were, but potentially with... And here's the, philosophically, here's my other big problem with Western medicine. It, It likes to put everything, it compartmentalizes, and it's the, which is the opposite of holistic. Now, the holistic doesn't mean I believe everything that some shaman says, but the idea that the body works as a whole, I completely buy into because I've seen it. And I, it's, just, it's, it's, it's like intuitively obvious. So anything you do, like Ozempic, okay, it's working. It's working, but other things in your body are changed from it. Oh, without and question. I don't, right. And that's what I'm always, the question I'm always asking. Like, you think vaccines cause, no, I don't think vaccines cause cancer. What I think is you don't know what causes cancer. And we do a lot of different things that, who knows, maybe like, uh, you know, vaccine plus X, whatever it is, if you had many vaccines and you have this factor, then well, because because is, cancer is they just, know what it does. It's on the it's website. About what is you know? It's this like, is this is what, actually far more concrete. But I'm just saying we yeah. until you tell me what causes cancer, I don't know what different elements might contribute to it, in what form. So I'm going to try to stay as natural as I can. Now I can't always do that, but that should be my choice to try to do that. Okay. So, so there's two that's why I would this. never do Ozempic. Well, so the this side of this that is far less rosy, right, is that you're somebody who experiences one of the more common side effects, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, right. vomiting, right? Then you've got muscle loss, and it's pretty significant. In fact, Dr. Peter Atia came out and said that he's seeing muscle loss at a, quote, alarming rate in the DEXA right. scans of his patients. There's a bone density problem with it. On the website, pancreatitis, kidney failure, gallbladder issues, vision loss, right. and stomach me, paralysis, intestinal blockage. And, to, uh, and to the, the fact that that you know it, it's crazy. It, the fact that it sometimes appears as a bad side effect in so many different areas tells me again about holistic medicine. It, like, they'll do a study, you know, well, it affects the gallbladder. Yeah, in this person it did. It probably affects adversely what that person's weak part is. We, I, don't, I don't know what the person's profile is, but what I'm saying is, like, a lot of things in your body, they're opportunistic, you know, and they will go where it's weak. For you, it might be the gallbladder. Somebody else, it affected their... Thyroid tumors, I forgot that one. Whatever, right. We don't know why it's doing that. We don't know what's going on in there. But that basically is what's going on in there. You're giving it an opportunity to to go somewhere and do some damage. And maybe you'll be lucky and it won't because you're the kind... But until we have those answers, let me make those decisions. I want to give you one more thing on this. Okay. Okay. How does it work? It works by curbing appetite, right? Right. So it's facilitating weight loss by allowing you to eat less. Okay, so we know that eating less is going to facilitate weight loss. Now that we know this, that's the only mechanism by which it's facilitating weight loss. And any other benefits they profess to be associated with this drug like heart health, which will happen on something called a Twinkie diet, meaning you can eat pure shit, 
If you eat less of it and you lose weight, you'll get the exact same benefits. The mechanism for improved health is weight loss. Now then, why are people unable to control their appetite? And this is where you need to look at what is going on with the environment and what is going on with the food and what is going on in their head. This is the shit that we need to deal with. Right. It isn't about judging people. It right. isn't about an easy way out. Right. It's about getting to the root of the problem, even people a real solution without the hazards of potential side effects. And at the end of the day, your best case scenario doesn't play out in three, four, five years anyway. Club Random is brought to you by the audio marketing gurus at Radioactive Media. February is the month that represents love and the blessed coming together of people, mainly since dry January is over. It's way easier to find love when you're drunk. If you love your business and like making money, then do something different that will enlarge your sales and acquire new customers by partnering with shows like mine. You'll love the lower CPMs, elevating your brand in a space away from your competition. And you'll be in deep like, generating up to nine times more leads by combining the power of audio and video channels with text messaging and generate an ROI as high as five, six, or seven to one. The best way to achieve these goals is through the team at Radioactive Media. They work nationally on podcasts, terrestrial, satellite, and radio. Club Random has been partnering with Radioactive Media since the beginning, and they can create a customizable campaign for your company's needs. Radioactive believes so much in the power of audio marketing, they put their money where their mouths are by advertising on my show right here, right now. Radioactive Media has an exclusive deal to promote your product or service on Club Random with me and save up to 50%. Go to radioactivemedia.com or text the word random to 511511. Discover how audio marketing can surpass your current strategies with new and innovative ways that sound better. Go to radioactivemedia.com or text random to 511511. Text random to 511511 today to save up to 50%. Terms, conditions, message, and data rates may apply. I'm here to tell you about Genucel. Their product is called Gen 90, the new instant wrinkle treatment from Genucel. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet, laugh lines, and it starts working in seconds. Gen 90 technology is luxurious, nourishing, silky smooth, and best of all, it starts working in seconds. And when you use it, you can feel the tingle every single time. It's like a little massager for the face. I love a lot about Genucel, but one of the biggest ones is that it is cruelty-free and not tested on any animals. I love that it's natural and free from mineral oil, parabens, and harmful chemicals because it's formulated by a compounding pharmacist. Gen 90 is on sale now at Genucel.com and it's of course included in the bestseller package. Order right now at Genucel.com slash random. That's Genucel.com slash random. Free shipping on all orders. Genucel.com slash random. Genucel.com slash random. You might know Ben Mankiewicz as a host on Turner Classic Movies. Now you can hear Ben in intimate conversation with some of the most influential filmmakers and movie boss of our time on the new podcast, Talking Pictures from TCM and Max. Personal and honest conversations with the greats, Nancy Myers, Mel Brooks, Emerald Fennell, and me. I did it too. I watched Reds and talked about it with Ben and had a blast. Listen to Talking Pictures on Max or wherever you get your podcast. You know what? I'm astounded. People don't understand that antibiotics have a bad effect on them. They don't, they, that like that, the doctor never sort of mentions that part of it, which is, this is not controversial. It's just like, so like I'm working from this place, I feel like, uh, my understanding of medicine and it's just very different from theirs so when i you know you're joking about something where you have to first convince them of the premise yeah they're not with you on the premise yet no they're not unplugged but, from the matrix but then they when they laugh at the at the punchline they realize oh okay that must be true because i laughed because <laughs> right. you know there's truth in every what, joke yeah there's truth in jokes 100%. so like but it is a, it is more of a heavy lift than any other subject. I mean, people just, I think what it is, is that what scares people, death and sick, you know, and and sick and dying is even worse. So like, it's a very scary subject. So it's just more uh, comforting to believe there's this priesthood in their white, <laughs> you know, <laughs> medical garb with the stethoscope around their neck. And, and these high priests have all the answers about your health. So just, you know, whatever they say, 
the, 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 the doctor. Huh, and you're not, and no one else that can possibly know. That is the number one thing. And they, they, just, they just have this exalted view of how much more they must know. I mean, yes, I didn't go to medical school. I'm sure there are things they know. They're also blind about a lot of shit and prove it all the time. What's interesting is a lot of the doctors that I'll speak to talk about exactly that. How um, I'll talk to Dr. Casey Means, who's absolutely incredible. She's one of the founders of this company called Levels, where they monitor your glucose constantly. And she's just an amazing woman. Mm. And she was saying how she started talking about prevention, like diet and exercise, and they were making fun of her. And <laughs> she's, she's like, really? Are you, seriously, this is a joke? It, it, a lot of the doctors that take that upstreamist viewpoint, I don't know if you've seen that TED Talk, where you've got bodies in the water and people are rushing in to save these bodies and they're doing triage, which is medicine as we know it, right? Drugs, symptoms, drugs, symptoms. But then one person goes, hold on, I'm, I'm going to go upstream and find out why there's all these bodies in the water. And that's upstreamist medicine. There are very few doctors that practice that way. So you watch TED Talk? Constantly. Really? I've never seen a TED Talk. By the time I was about to watch one, it had become like so, like, <laughs> like lampoon as douchey that I what was like. What about Big Think? Do you do the Big Think talks? No. What's that? I don't even know what that is. Is that really? like a? Is that their rival? Kinda. Oh, yeah. Really? Like monster trucks versus super monster trucks? Yeah, but for intellectuals. <laughs> I no. feel like you like big things. They got a lot of scientists on there. I'm sure. I, you know what? I get my most most of my medical news in the Enquirer, and I know this seems wrong, but like they do have a little medical. Teach me. Explain wait, it wait. to me. Hold I know, on, I know this is going to sound crazy. I'm going to dig in on this one. The I'm going to take the bait. Enquirer and the Globe. Okay. They have a medical page, and <laughs> it's just a few paragraphs. And of course, because it's in these magazines, you think this is crazy. It's not. It's just like the tip of the iceberg of some new discovery. But if you then like Google this discovery and the doctor that they quote, you'll see it's a very real thing. Now, talking about coffee, like coffee has like the most amazing lobbyists. I mean, coffee gets a lot of press for like doing wonderful things. And I'm sure it does. It's also acidic. Um, we just like it to so who gives a fuck. Okay, I'm going to keep, thing I'm gonna keep doing it. Bullshit. But if Don't you- Don't buy into that one. But it, what? The acidic conversation. With coffee? But, Coffee's but like, not acidic? How's it harming you? No, I, Think about how acidic well, your stomach okay. acid is. That whole alkaline water thing's kind of bullshit. Okay. That kind well, of total bullshit. You know me, I love her learning about this subject, so I don't know about this. I'm always open to the alternative view, though. So Inflammatory would be something that you would worry about, right? Your body releasing inflammatory proteins and cytokines, and what's going to do that? Sugar. Well, sugar, we all agree is bad. Sugar and then the buildup of all this dead tissue and excess right. body fat releasing. But the, but you're saying coffee is not acidic. or It's or not it, even a thing. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, acidic isn't a thing? Oh, come on. That's not true. How so? Well, if, What's you, it if, do? if your pH is too acidic. How is your pH going to become too acidic? There's no such thing. Well, your stomach, like all the alkaline water and all that stuff, it's all bullshit. Wow. That is an alternative. I'll send you a TED talk. <laughs> uh, no, I promise, in all honesty. No, treat me like Reagan. Put it on one page. You got it. <laughs> but I do promise you, total bullshit. The pH of your stomach is so well, friggin' acidic. It, you're right. never going to alkalize something, that. Uh, well, you okay, but want we're, to? we're kind of talking about two different things. Yeah, okay. it's true. Your so stomach what, what itself. What is your concern then? Well, your stomach itself is like a, a pH of 3.5, which is like a volcano. It is. Right. Set, for uh, the pH fans who forgot, seven is right in the middle. Okay. okay? Eight would be too alkaline. Okay. What's going to change the pH Wait, of your stomach though, outside of Well, I'll tell you, like, I'll tell you what's, well, proton you pump cert, inhibitors. You, I'll tell you. Okay. If you are too alkaline. That's bad. Agreed. Very bad. But what's going to make you So too you're saying alkaline? it's okay to be too Acidic, but I'm saying but, coffee won't tip that scale. No, but you said you said the whole thing is bullshit, and it's certainly not bullshit. If you have a very high alkaline, uh, you very likely will get more uh, urinary tract infections because you do not. It means that is a very conducive atmosphere for bacteria. I'm Ac saying acidic is is not conducive to bacteria. Eating food in an attempt to control your body's pH, like 
coffee changing right. the pH of your body, that's bullshit. No, well, uh, that is, again, that is... Proton pump inhibitor, yes. Things like that. What? what? So, medication. Oh. Yeah, so you have, oh, I have acid reflux. So, oh, here's this medication. But then it begets itself because your body's trying to overcome it. So what it you and, eat doesn't matter? If you eat complete shit food and you destroy your microbiome... What do you, what do you eat? What's your diet? Common sense. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't eat like a crazy keto or, no, you just- Keto's you, also bullshit. You have, you have, you have like mashed potatoes. Keto is right. bullshit. <laughs> it's total bull, okay. Well, it's it, not, it, should, it was, it's never been meant, and serious people who do talk about keto, do not talk about it like something that you would do as a as your regular if diet. If you have advanced it type is, two diabetes or epilepsy and you're under a doctor's supervision for a finite period of time, right. okay, fine. Right. And it's like, oh, okay. I, all these things improved because you stopped eating fucking McDonald's, It's dude. a treatment, yes. That's a, okay. It's like, it's a treatment. But what I'm- Go ahead, sorry. No, no. The, the bigger issue I'm trying to get with you, because this is very, to me, this is new to me, okay. so, which is great. And maybe I'm behind, or maybe, maybe I'll, not. I'll okay. do a deep dive into maybe this. Maybe I need to start reading think, the Enquirer. Think, oh, this chick, yeah, it's crazy. No, uh, no, I know you, you, you are much more involved in the details than I am. That's why I have full respect for the point of view. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. But, think about, okay, why were people doing keto? Well, bodybuilders did it back in the day. You know, it's funny. They also ate all day long. We know that's not good for you. <laughs> what do you mean they ate all day long? Oh they my did? God. Oh, because, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, well, the whole thing is not good for you. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Right. So, okay, so. Well, you look pretty jacked. <laughs> I eat normally, though. <laughs> really? Yes. But, you, but, I mean, you look like, I mean, look at those guns. You, look, <laughs> you must, I know, that's what your thing is. You, you, you're, you're famous for it. Kind of. You, you, you know, you do a lot of pull-ups, right? Whatever you do, <laughs> you look great. <laughs> That's what's important. But okay. Uh, but then okay. I should be speaking of right. If I was to be my own testimonial, when you look at something like keto, this comes from oh my god, what was the original? The Atkins diet. All of this stuff is just a bullshit spin to prey on people's well, vulnerabilities. Right. It is no, oh, burns it more is, fat. Yeah. No, it doesn't. What doesn't? So, for example, people were going on these diets because they thought they were going to lose weight more quickly. But isn't it better to run your body on fat than carbs? It doesn't even in, work that way, Bill. You would have wow. to be in a constant state of ketosis. <laughs> it, it doesn't work I am. that way. I, you know what? I mean, I. Isn't I, that what this if is? This, okay. <laughs> if this is what keto That's looks what like, then was, maybe you'll convince me to told try. I told me I was going to get to ketosis with this. <laughs> But that's, no, that's not true. In fact, if you were to even look at the blue zones, right? Yes, I do all the time. Okay. Those See, diets are 65% complex carbohydrates. There's another thing I say and people are like, what? You know, so like. Dan Buner, amazing guy. He's the one who, yeah. Do you respect him? Yeah. The, this guy's done a ton of homework right. on it. Right. That's, that's, nothing is more valuable to me than information. I'm like Don Corleone. And so <laughs> like. Knowing that there are places in this world, and this is what blue zones are, where people live routinely to a hundred. That's it does and I what's a lot the similarity of the books in the I, diet? A lot is of it the, keto? No fucking way, Bill. Right. No, no, right, right. But it's more than just I mean, of course, there are a confluence of factors, not just diet. But there it's are a, one of them is a uh, one of the blue zones is a fucking religious nuts place. It's uh but it's, it's the about one faith. In, it's about faith. A connection to something deeper is the is the theme. Really? Yeah, I think of spirituality, of faith. Well, I think everybody, most people in, in the something. world, most communities have faith. There's, I'm, I'm an atheist. I'm the outlier. There's, uh, that is a growing movement. Yeah, thanks, for sure. Thanks mostly to me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, it, but most people in the world, I, I think you have to take that factor out because that's a good scientist takes that out because it's not a good variable. It, people are, are people of... who eat shit have faith, and people who don't eat shit and eat well have faith. Okay, but... humans mostly have faith. They 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 will profess to something, either a specific religion, or they say I'm spiritual, or whatever it is. Okay, there it's not just no. This is it. That... I'd say meaning. Meaning is incredibly important for longevity, community, activity. 
And then there are just flat out some similar through lines in each and every one of these diets. I'm yes, saying, but it's not faith. Is what I'm but, saying. But I'm telling faith you doesn't make you healthy because lots of fat, purpose. ugly faith, not but ugly. There, there is a robust amount of data behind this providing people with having that deeper sense of meaning and a okay. sense of connection to something I'm not But one. it's not going to make up for the food. No, it's not. You're okay, right. maybe, yes. It's a confluence of factors. Okay, but I think you're looking into specifically what is good for health is de-stressing. People, yes. who, people who find a way. That doesn't have to be any kind of faith or God or spiritual. I have my ways of doing it. How much stress is the right amount in my life? Well, you know, zero would be good, but then you would be bored. You know, so it's a... It's a I could argue that it, one with you too, believe it or not. And people find other ways without religion or, or any kind of faith to like not have stress. It's the stress that's causing the inflammation, okay? So it's not faith itself. It's anything that can get your brain in a place because your brain, I'm sure you would agree, affects your body. 100% agree course, with we, you. Of course, we see it in this easy to prove examples like when the blood drains out of your face mm -hmm. when you're scared. Why is that happening? Because your body wants it in your legs so you could run faster. Yeah. Okay, so it does if So, yeah, when, you're, when your brain is not stressed too much, that is a huge health factor. Religion can help that, but you can do it other ways. You can do it other ways, absolutely. That's why I think the bigger picture is, is having meaning, feeling connected to something, something that gives you a purpose. I mean, don't Rastafarians worship this? I mean, isn't that, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> do they you know, live forever? There's a well, lot of uh, controversy uh, no. around weed being the health. And, what do you, oh, well, tell me your take on that. I got to know. You're not going to like it. No, tell me. I don't subscribe. Oh, I understand. I think it's, I. But, I, you, but you think it's very unhealthy? Okay. I've interviewed uh, Give several Give it to me straight, John. I personally, for How me, long do I have? Okay. I haven't done a ton of homework on this one. Okay. Um, so I this have. is an opinion. Okay. So this is my opinion. <laughs> no. I've I'm done, not transacting in I've in done facts. field work. No homework. My, my feeling on it is that to smoke it, I think, is terrible for you. And I would feel very confident saying so, right? Because you're taking smoke I, into your lungs. I've always said that. I'm, I'm not, um, I've never been sentimental about it. A lot of my hippie friends are, and they try to find ways. And I always say, it's not health food. I get that. It's just better than liquor. And, I would and agree with you. Maybe there. the trade off is worth it. But I always say that and I say it to all the kids out there anytime you're putting smoke in your lungs, it's not ideal. Yeah, that's not going to be good for you. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, people try to pass it off. It's, it's like, oh, it's this panacea. No. Anytime you no. have a health panacea. We, we, don't say, we don't say that about pot. Not or, you, but a lot of people will. People, people exaggerate probably the properties of CBD, but CBD plainly does help people. With, but with what condition? Like, like oh, arthritis. Oh, okay. maybe, maybe. But I've heard it. Like, oh, epilepsy. Well, oh, arthritis. I mean, oh, digestion. Oh, cancer patient. When you have something that cures everything, that's they, when I'm like, they're, okay. They're not saying it cures. I, I don't know. What, this is a straw man argument. There's no one is saying pot cures everything. A lot of people do. I, you must be talking to people on the sidewalk wearing a sandwich board because not. I've never heard anyone. Uh, Are you talking to anybody 30 years old who smokes it or eats it all the time? They will and, give you all the cases why it's God's gift to health. What are these, TikTokers? I mean, I, Probably. I, I, mean, okay, I, well, I have a, I have well, okay, a but, I mean, much but, younger brother but, but who's trying to convince people. me. I'm serious. I'm telling you. Like, all the millennials are like, oh, man. And then I rubbed it on my elbow and I got fucking better. And then my friend ate it and, and the brain tumor went away. And then this person ate it and 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 then and, and, and they had the, their vaginal dryness went away. I'm like, what? Okay. The fuck? I mean, if, like, if that is if out there. Your point is that there's a lot of randos out there who, <laughs> it's not who a lot. believe who, it's way more common who, than you who think. Who believe stupid shit? Uh, <laughs> I give up. You're right. There are. I mean, I, mean, I hear that a not lot. Not even the dumbest thing they believe, although I mean, it's dumb. <laughs> Yeah. No, CBD, I don't know. I mean, it's not a, it's not a part of my diet. Well, I guess it's, if it's in the pot, it is. But um, yeah, look, you got to live. I mean, Agreed. Yeah, and you got to, I mean, life is a series of trade-offs trade -off, trade and choices. And, you know, I definitely have <laughs> traded uh, health for fun. 
I mean, I, I, I just do it way more. You look pretty healthy to me. So yeah, thank you're obviously you. making a lot of excellent choices. Yeah, well, you know what? In other I, areas. I, I just cleaned up my act. I always say this. But, um, you know, it's, it's a little like in, in sports where they say you take what the defense will give you. And when my body gave me, like at the age of 30, the ability to have 30 drinks a week, I did. And when the, my body said, you know, no more. we'll give you 10, I, I took that. And my body now says, you know, a few, you know, but <laughs> ne never more than two at a time. Same. You know, right? You know, and, I've never been able to and, get past two. You know, I mean, I'm almost 70. I don't, my body has the right to say that to me. And I, and I'd be, you can't win that battle. So why fight it? People do, but it's done. I gotta be honest. I had no idea you were almost 70. And when we look at Brad Pitt and everyone's like, God damn it, that guy looks amazing. I think you've got him in my leaps and bounds. You, and I'm not, I, listen, I would go at you. Bill, <laughs> honestly, I would go at you. I'd be like, you gotta stop doing that, buddy. That's so fucking bad for you. You look amazing. Thank you. You're sharp as a fucking tack. You're fit as a fiddle. And I would love to, to lecture yeah. you about this stuff. You seem to be doing well, good. everything. Well, I do. I mean, right, I, in large I, part. I, I fast twice a year. That's How long? On five days. It's a long one. Yeah, not a, I not understand. A, not a, a kind of that I, they call it the fasting mimicking diet. Um, works for me because I can't do a straight up one. And so you get a little food. They swear it mimics a real fast. I think it does wonders. Um, the, I, I only the research does only so. two. It does absolutely. Oh, yes, um, I only eat two meals a day. Also, really good. Yeah. So I mean that kind of stuff. Sleep, yes. Get great. And hardly ever have to wake up to an alarm, which I think is a huge sleep factor to just naturally wake up. It, all of the doctors who specialize in sleep will say right that if you have to be woken up by an alarm, you're doing something wrong. Right. Uh, nothing like waking up naturally with your dick in your hand. Uh, <laughs> I but even if your dick's I not can't in your speak hand. to that one. <laughs> even you know, without, but hey, even I without that, but yeah. I trust you on that. So, I mean, I think those are things. And then, you know, you have to want to live. I mean, you have to, I mean, I'm fortunate. I uh, mostly enjoy my life and I like doing what I'm doing. And it's, um, you know, you have purpose? to. Purpose? Uh, yeah, purpose, exactly. You have to have a purpose. And, you know, even if you have a lot of, you know, you see in show business, a lot of times you have to drag people out because it's like, it's mostly fun compared to work work. I mean, there is work and we work hard, but we enjoy our work. We're very lucky in that way. A lot of people, when you say job, it means something ugh, that you don't want to go to. We don't, we don't think that about what we do. We like going to what we do. Not a lot of people have that or not enough. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and I know what it's like to go to jobs like that when I was younger. You know, I went to a lot of shit jobs. And it's like a job is different than a career. So if you have that, that's, and money is the hugest um, stressor. stressor. Yeah. They say uh, in relationships, what do people fight about? Overwhelmingly. Is it money? Money is I find one. it to be kids. But if it's. <laughs> kids is probably second. Kids has got to be second. I, see, as someone who never got married. I, I, my first thought was, oh, it must be sex. Right. People fight yeah. about sex. And I'm like, no, Bill, you have it was Somebody was schooling. They're like, you have no idea what marriage is. Like, yeah. you, you make your peace with not having a lot of sex a long time ago. And then that, that's not what breaks us up. It's like, oh, wow. I, I mean, I never made that choice. You know, you're married, right? I am married. How long have you been married? Um, so I've been with my wife. Five and a half years. We've Wait, been married. Wife. <laughs> I'm, to, kidding. My, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, uh, surprise! Uh, <laughs> but I, mean, I am working out with my dick in my hand, Bill. Um, <laughs> sorry, just uh, sidebar. Uh, we've been married two years. Two years. Oh, you're two a newlywed. And I never got right. married previously, even to my ex. Wow. Who um, I have two kids with. Oh, Because I wow. was just not a believer. You have two kids with an ex. Yeah. She's a wonderful person. I just was not. I was anti-marriage. And then my my wow. current wife was like, listen. Isn't the divorce rate among lesbians the lowest? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. In fact, there's something called lesbian bed death, which is very real. You want to talk about fighting over sex? That shit is real. And what, what is what is it? It's called lesbian 
bed death. Bed death. Yep. What does it mean? It basically means that you just stop fucking. Oh, like regular marriage. I don't think it's as, <laughs> I think it's worse. I actually think okay, it's worse. So this is just what I've been told. So okay, just, okay. again, school, okay. school me when I'm wrong. Got it, fair. I mean, okay. I, like, just like, like I'm- Just like keto? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm gonna do a deep dive into that health stuff you were telling me about. I'm gonna, I will send you all I'm these, gonna though. do a deep dive into this lesbian stuff. I'm ready. Wait, that I, came I, out wrong. I've never considered myself a, uh, a pro here. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I think I could be helpful considering- I, I was told, and again, I probably have, the, <laughs> I probably have terrible information information on both ends of this, but I was told somewhere along the way um, that uh, les that lesbian marriages lasted longer because there there wasn't like this great expectation of sex. So it like they, they, <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I know nothing about this. So, so like I'm a, I actually interviewed a sex therapist on my podcast and she was saying that women not only have as high of a sex drive as men, but they also seek out new partners more than men. I don't know if really? this is true. I said the same shit. And they, I don't know if they need like <laughs> no. the strange, I don't know what I, it I, is. I, like, but with, with my wife, it's kind of like- That is not my heterosexual experience. Maybe I've been very lucky. I think I have. I think you attract a certain type. And all my life, I wished I attracted like the slutty girl. <laughs> and, and I was attracted to the nice girl. And I'm now, I'm like, oh good. It probably saved me from, I'm probably dead by now. But I always wanted that. But like I've been very fortunate. I did never attracted that like evil girl a couple of times. But you know, you know what are you gonna do? But toxic, super but, addicting. But most so I don't see women that way. I see them as um, maybe I have them on a pedestal, but I don't think they're. They are. I'm telling you. Oh, oh, they're they're definitely especially modern girls. Most modern girls are. They just have an attitude that is brought upon by, I think, cynicism about, and I don't blame them one bit. Okay, like, okay, like men can do so little for me, and they do do so little for me. They can't even approach me correctly. They're too scared to approach me. Everything has to go through the phone or whatever it is. They, they don't, you know, they're just lazy. Hey, you know, hey, what's up? Uh, eggplant emoji. You know, <laughs> this is... This is this is like their whole rap, and they, they just, they're just, I, I just hear this all the time, they're just horrible. So women have a very cynical attitude, um, reinforced by the music and stuff forth, and it's a lot about, like, you know, uh, buy me something, you know, or just, you know, they just don't, ex they're, they're so low expectation for actual romance, it makes you very cynical. I can say that I have quite a few friends who are straight, and, looking for love in all the wrong places like the dating apps unfortunately right. is a is a recipe for disaster and i've come to the conclusion that these apps in large part are guys that think they're just shopping for girls it's like okay well you know they're they're almost well, like less than human on these apps whereas of course. if you meet someone in real life where you oh, share friends your exactly. behavior is going to be much better well you don't even have to share friends that's a nice way to do it but it's not a prerequisite but for You're me behave for me differently i think human has to be human first of all i i, I don't understand these kids i i see like People I know, they send me whatever, I guess you put a little picture of yourself, like in the corner of, what am I thinking of, texting or, I, I guess mean, so. Yeah. Like whatever, and I see their picture and I'm like, ah, oh, you don't look like that. Yeah, I know you, <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't, that's a very charitable, flattering version of yourself. AI and generated like, by a face on AI face generated, tune. it's just they have the little, they've had these tricks for like- Yeah, the face tune. It's uh, 15 years they can do shit, filters. They can AI and, generate so like, your face now on face tune. But I'm even, serious. even before AI, it was not hard yeah. to just like, Era. just like fix it. And it's like, well, why would I want to have ever- False advertising? Well, just not know what someone is and looks like for real. And then probably it's going to be less. Probably. Who's going to make themselves look worse? And then you're like, oh, I'm pleasantly surprised. I don't think that happens often. No, I, I can't speak to this in any sort of educated capacity because my wife will say this all the time with friends that face tune things. And she's like, why do they do this? Because they're going to meet this guy and it's it's gonna say like, oh, you, 
You don't look but, like you're... I don't know really why people do it. But also, like, you have to... I think to to know so to get a feel for somebody, literally be in the same room. Like I will almost never do a satellite uh, interview on real time because I I just uh, I mean yes if it's Netanyahu and uh, Israel I will you make an exception. Uh, yeah yeah okay. we make exceptions, but it's it's rare because it's just not as good an interview. It's just not you can't you don't feel somebody you can't look in their eye. Timing you know there has the delay. So you can't, like, it's not a ping pong match like it is in a real conversation. But you know and most I, people don't do that anyway. How many interviews have you sat in where they have their cards and yes. they know what they're going to no, ask no, no. you? And they're like, so you got married last summer. And you're like, right. I'm sorry, my mother just died of cancer. I can't focus. And where was the wedding? And you're like, right. dude. No, I, I, no. <laughs> is anybody, whole, like, if people aren't switched on anyway, most people aren't, which is why... You have excelled so much of what you oh, do. Oh, thanks. I mean, I love doing this because this is even more, I mean, real time, I do a lot of preparation, but it is a completely off the cuff panel conversation. But um, this this is a whole new kind of way to just completely approximate exactly how I would be in life. I mean, I know I'm not cleaning up anything or planning anything or, you know, it's like I said before, when I went, uh, what were we talking about? I would never do that on real time. You know, that's just not. I know. I see. A, I, I see that. you d that's differently because I watch both. This is this is real life. Can I like ask a, you something? A, a real, as real as it gets. That I've all, that I've been wondering for such a long time. You start out as a comedian, and I saw this poll the other day, and it was like, "Who's the best man in news?" And I thought, Jesus, what's that like to most start out trusted? As a, I got from yes, yes, from this, yeah, I know that was it. <laughs> and I thought, wow, what's that like to I know. go from being? I a, completely understand, and how I does accept. That happen, I accept Bill? This, was that intentional? I accept the golden light. <laughs> no, that just did kind you of, set that, out? No. What? How do you make that transition? Was it organic, or are you you just thinking everybody's full no, of shit? No, I got to step in. I, I've been doing that for thirty years, and they finally caught up. There's your answer. So, but you but, speak to so many people who see themselves in you. And anytime I've ever tried to justify, it's so crazy, justify my position. I'm like, well, did you see that episode of Real Time where Mar said, and it's it's like the only way to try to communicate a point of view to either a liberal or a conservative. You can justify your position if you said it. It's crazy. It's almost like professionally, if I was to tell you something about keto and you said I'm full of shit, I would turn around and go, well, Dr. Peter Atia and Dr. Lane Norton both just said that keto doesn't burn more body fat, blah, blah, blah. And I can validate my position. Yeah, but so can they. And that's why I'm just always arguing with these people about just don't dictate what I have to do. I am going to be the final arbiter of what I want to do with my body, whether it's a vaccine or anything else, because the doctors don't agree. So if there's if there's this uncertainty, I'm going to have to make these decisions. And a lot of stuff in health is like a, even the doctors. The you know ones, the devil's advocate the argument. Ones I respect, You're killing my grandma. You know that argument. The ones I respect are the ones who start the conversation about complicated things with like, you know, we, we just don't know. Oh. Just admit it. Like here, no, do we have a perfect, we really don't have anything perfect for this. Uh, we've been trying to find some, here's the things we have been used with some success, but just don't tell me they're, they don't have the answers. So in that atmosphere, you have to let me with the people I respect and the, philosoph the philosophy of medicine I choose to follow, which is not crazy or anti-Western, yeah, but you didn't have that luxury. And that's the question you need to ask is why did you not have mm -hmm. the luxury to make that decision? It was mandated. Right. Oh, yeah, no, we, and then we it's agree. And it's like, well, why? And I remember watching, I think it was it's Eric Weinstein, the two brothers. There's Brett Weinstein and Eric Weinstein. One's an evolutionary yeah. biologist and one's a physicist. I've had Brett on the show and, and his wife. It, Brett. You know, Brett and I remember him saying, you know, there's a fundamental problem here. Number one, it's not effective enough. It's not a vaccine. People are still getting sick, very sick. So, well, it was effective. How effective? I mean, I got COVID I think, before it and after it. 
about the same both times. For I, older people at I, risk, I'll, I'll well, that's who buy I'm, it. that's who we're talking about. But they're mandating it for kids, so. But of course, they also gave it to a lot of older people, like soon after they had the flu vaccine, and their bodies couldn't take two vaccines at once. And that's just the science of it. You know, that's just even the people who argue on the other side would have to agree. When you take a vaccine, you're taxing your body. You're because that's the that's the it's supposed to be. We're we're that's the plan. side effects. Just like yeah. when you work out. You're harming your body. Stress, yeah. You are harming your body when you work out, so it comes back stronger. And stress, you can yeah. That that would be those, the argument I would I would circle back to on the stress. And, comment, but it's 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 balanced amount of stress for sure. Right. But the, the question is, are you going to put your body through that kind of stress? Cost benefit analysis for a kid is it worth it? No. Oh, it's not efficacious course, Exactly. I mean... And then it's... Again, not... Like, is it worth the side effects for a kid? Not no. This, like, then there's the you're killing my grandmother conversation. The, 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 but if the, the kid still gets sick, then the grandmother's still going to get sick. So where does it... To me, the question is, there's a, why the intense mandate over something? There's a wide gap yeah. between um, everybody, no matter how old, has to get it, and understanding that it, it was a tool... The COVID vaccine, got to give them credit. They came up with, I mean, it, they had been working on it for a very long time. The mRNA that, tech? Yes. Yeah. 30 um, years, supposedly. Yes. So, um, but they, you I mean, know, I, I, I've, I've had that conversation, okay, so they, but still, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, mm. it's, uh, uh, look, I got it. I did too. I would never get a booster. I did not either. Um, but I didn't want it. Uh, but. I would not have been able to continue with my life. I would not have been allowed near the studio exactly. or, or on the road. Okay, so you know, I took one for the team and for my own selfish desire to continue with my life. Um, but if if it happened again, I don't know. You know, I I I, I think the the bigger question that needs to be answered is what's behind all of this. For, and what I mean by that is, I remember when this first happened, and I don't think at that time I could have been more left, whereas now I'm definitely, def, definitely center. And I remember watching an episode of Rogan with Brett, and it was March of 2020, and he broke down all the reasons he thought this came from a lab. And I was just like gain of function research, Wuhan Institute of Raw, what's a fear and cleavage site asking different doctors. And I went to all my lefty friends and I was like, this came from lab. And they're like, oh, you fucking tin hat. You married a conservative. You're out of your mind. Now, the CIA, the FBI, oh, the Department uh, of Energy, it came from a lab. Why was that entire conversation I, shut down? Why are we not allowed to have it to this day? And people go, why does it well, matter? Well, they, they, they do have it now. And Not really. Well, who's debating how safe gain-of-function research is? How well, about fucking nobody? Nobody, what, Bill. What people are not doing is making it, a. you're right, as big an issue as it it's, should be. It's, it should be a huge issue because I, I honestly think like in 20, I don't know, 50 years, 100 years, sometime like in the future, they will look back on this period and it will strike them as so odd that it was controversial that a virus that started in Wuhan, <laughs> where this one <laughs> almost unique in the world lab was that was doing this exactly, the fact that they argue in 2020 yes. and 21, they were, and all the way up through 20, whatever, they were arguing about this. Now, could it be a coincidence with the bats? It could. But it, I mean, I just think it's really gonna, gone. it's gonna look bad in the future. It's gonna yeah. be, a, it's gonna be a come I on, mean, man. Even the Fauci emails are like, I don't know. I think I'm saying 70, 30 came from a lab in the emails. Well, it's just, like, it's, just it's just, it's just. Why were, can't they, we say this yes. is a huge fucking problem? They were right. We need to get a hold of this thing. This could be as. Big of an existential crisis for humanity is nuclear weapons. But this isn't amazing to you. Like it was in the paper today about this country came out of the pandemic way better. We just fuck. We won the pandemic economically. I mean, America. Oh, God, I don't feel that way. Explain it to me. I feel like inflation's insane. Um, number. Everything... Inflation is not insane. Bill, 
I, I, go buy there, a car. There's, there's numbers. I, I understand things, a but, house but but it has has tripled here. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I I get that people buy some fucking eggs. Um, <laughs> Explain okay, to me. But, but that, I, well, I'm not there, an there, economist, there, so there's fe- I'm just there's trying to... feelings, and then there's the numbers. Okay, what are the numbers? The, the num- well, the numbers have come down a lot in the last six months. Okay. Uh, it, of course, they were. it was inevitable when we gave out $6 trillion so that everybody could hide under the bed from the forever flu. That was never going to end well. It was taken by the richest people ever and didn't and it was, get where and it, it needed and it was, to go. A lot of it was stolen. It was, it was, we agree on that, too. It was like... It, was there some response needed? Of course, you don't want the hospitals overrun, but it was a, just a massive overreaction, and that did cause some of the inflation. But the the big story, the big picture, is every other nation in the world much worse off now, and this country for some reason just chugs fucking along. It's like it's it's almost scarier because I think we're just cocky now when we think we can do anything. Trump. Handled it. <laughs> Pandemic handled it. What? Nothing happened. Did Trump blow up the world? I tried to did tell pa- that to my did mom. Did fucking COVID but kill she all of us? No. It is going to be the end of the world. And it's like, it's yeah, it. but maybe the next one or Trump's next term, you know, just because it didn't happen before, I don't know. I think it's a very dangerous way to live to think you can keep brushing the shit. The debt. There's another one was that was say, going to we, kill us. Or are for, we pretending I don't know. like everything's okay? I don't know. Because, don't we have tr- immigration? I, I we're, Not an know, economist, but from the outside being, looking in, we're, trillions of dollars in debt. Yes, but Ross Perot was saying this 30 years ago that it was going to kill us when it was like $2 oh, trillion. Oh, yeah, it hasn't yet. We just, immigration, we're being over, we are kind of being over, it doesn't seem to affect anything. I mean, but I'm does it eventually you, implode? We Is just, there going to be a straw? I would say yes. I think America's just like a teenage boy, stupid but strong, you know, just like, and nothing stops you. And yes, we're driving at 80 miles an hour with the top down along Mulholland. <sighs> but somehow, unless we, and we could go over the but side. But they totally. sometimes do. And we sometimes do, I know. But as of now, we're having a good time. <laughs> I, I think some of it we're going to get away with. Mm-hmm. But some of it we're not. Absolutely. Some of it we're no. just definitely not. And I, you know, the economy stuff, I don't really understand. And what, I, I've how old are your kids? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They're like talk. Is that that just, complicated yeah, question? No, no, it's just it, the ages come with some some fascinating trials and tribulations. Um, 12 and 14 in a matter of weeks, so 11 and 13. Well, that's, ex- that's I was reading about that age cohort in the paper also today. That's they, They're very... Pessimistic, it said about they 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 they're very bleak about the future, you know. Our generations ruined the environment, uh, and like they, no, it's, ge- it's worse than that. It's worse Ill. than that. Yeah, really? it's. Tell me about the kids today, really, because I I wouldn't know. I, listen, thank, thank I, you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I I what, love what my are the, kids. What are the kids up to? I love my kids. Are they on OnlyFans? Not yet. <laughs> You're laughing. Do you know my kids come home and they tell me like, oh, they make, it, it, it is. Hey, if the kids can make money. More aggressive. So-and-so's sister's on OnlyFans. So-and-so's sister's on OnlyFans. Really? Did you know she's on OnlyFans? You mean children are allowed on OnlyFans? Somehow they're on there. Really? You don't have to be Underage. like. Underage. Yes, you do. Oh. But somehow they get on there. Really? Yeah. And oh then it's like, it's, it is a whole, it is crazy. Crazy shit. Yeah, I know. And unfortunately, the environment we're living in, I, I, you know, I grew up in a world where all we wanted to do was get rid of labels. Love is love. Right. You know, one race, human. Right. Now these kids are like, you fucked my label up. There's a PY minus sign in it. Just, what the fuck is going on what with you guys? Mean? What's a PY minus? It's, I'm, I'm, being, like, I, I'm being absurd. But my point is like, they've all, oh, I'm a Q plus. T minus, and I have sex with chickens. Oh, you're talking about a sexual designation? Like like, like LGBTQ? We tried to get rid of labels. Now, everything is is that what you're talking about? Like LGBTQ As one example, is that we tried to get rid of labels in our generation and tried to not look at race. Now, everything's about race. Everything's about labels. And I don't think it is helping at all. 
I grew up here in the San Fernando Valley and the only prejudice I ever saw consistently was gays. Gays were gross. And I grew up homophobic. Not you. Oh, I was so homophobic. No. Oh, you're talking about gay men. All of it. Because I feel like there's a very big difference. Like, even to like hardcore homophobes, hot no, <laughs> women. No, it was all are, gross. Are, Until? To, to who? To who? In my I life. Don't, I don't remember lesbians ever being gross. I remember yeah, maybe, them, maybe, maybe I remember not them men, but... being in Penthouse Magazine is what I remember. Yeah, but that was not the typical lesbian. At no, all. of course not. And then of course not. not at all. And <laughs> no. then you know, then Madonna came out with Justify My Love and she was dating your Casares and you had these two hot women. It was like, oh, is this cool to be bisexual? Yeah. But put it this way, no one was saying the N-word and making like racial slurs about people crossing the border and you know, being anti-Semitic. I never heard any of that shit. Ever. You, mm. you, you'd you have been shamed to death out of society if you made any of those comments. Really? For me growing up here, I never experienced so what, it. So what year did you graduate high school? 91. 91. Okay, so like uh, NWA was I, at I the top of I went to high school the... at Ice Cube. It's my claim to you fame. You did? Yes. Where did you go to high school? Compton? Tough tie. Ta- he was, he was busted. in. Holy, I'm, I'm guessing. He holy, was from Compton. So. Holy moly. Yeah. Maybe, uh, that's wow. my claim to fame. That is a piece of history. But did now, you know him? I didn't fucking know him. Oh, what a what a missed opportunity. I agree. He's been there. He's he's awesome. I love him. He's amazing. Yeah. Point wow. being, now the shit my kids come home and tell me is stuff that would come straight out of like 1963. Straight out of Compton. <laughs> if only, Bill. You know. But, but what? What do you mean 1963? What? Okay, so my daughter is black. She's adopted, obviously. And she went to this trampoline park that the kids go to called Dojo Boom. She was with a friend of hers, my son, his friend. The kids get in the car and they're all amped up. And someone says, in the car, one of the kids is like, someone said to Lou, who's my daughter, my black daughter, oh, you must be amazing at basketball because you can run, steal, and jump. And I'm such an asshole. I'm like, well, of course she can. She's West African. She's Haitian, but she's genetically West African, meaning, of course she can. She's a genetic specimen, right? The child is just physically insanely strong and tall. And they're like, no, mom, run, steal, jump. I was like, wait, what? (laughs) And then they're like, don't worry. I won't say the name of this kid, but kid, my daughter's friend, called him a border hopper. I'm like, okay, guys, what the fuck is going on? And I had to like go home, have a teachable moment with my children. And I was like, we, we, who's saying border hopper at school? Oh, everybody says it. I'm like, everybody says, this is the shit. Do you think anybody, nobody. So for all this wokeness that you have in California, it is breeding some crazy divisive shenanigans that I have yeah. never it's, seen. It's not worked. It, uh... The, it's not working. like the extremes make each other yes. back and forth. You see this this cause and reaction effect, you know. Um, it's like really insane. And if that was the, the biggest problem, I would be so happy. It's not. Like the other day in the car, my son said something that was a teachable moment again. And he was trying to be funny and he made this comment. And before I could even... Say, buddy, no, you know. My daughter goes, reclip. And I, I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? And my son goes, reclip, mom. I'm like, I, educate me. He's like, you know, the app, reclip. So there's an app that the, the kids have weaponized their phones. So essentially, this app records your conversations. And the minute somebody says something that a Karen or a Kevin would say, you clip the last two minutes of the conversation and ruin their life. <gasps> oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That, that's the shit that I'm talking about. Oh. This is the kind of stuff. And oh, my I, God. I, <laughs> that I'm that, sitting with my daughter and I'm like, listen I, to I me. needed a trigger warning for that piece of information. No, really. I really did. No, you should have given me a trigger warning. I am, I'm that, telling you. I need a boomer trigger warning for yeah. the, that. 
how can Reclip. That, that's again why it's so amazing that this country hasn't fallen off the edge of the earth yet because we're, hole in we're the just <laughs> we're just so horrible and and it just gets worse and the younger generation is just insanely ignorant and entitled and and mean the things. phone they're it's not just, they're not everybody she didn't reclip him but she was joking well, about something that's very real peop, the phone very the real. phone has changed them the phone oh, 100%. is that's the evil that's the source of the evil it's it exacerbates everybody's worst in, you know in, we all have inclinations to do something wrong and then we check ourselves um, but the phone makes it easy to be shady anonymous and mean mm -hmm. and uh needy oh yeah and fake insecure so you you come out you raise a kid on the phone and you're gonna get a kid who's needy and fake and mean you and, keep and so shady and this kind of stuff like the caught you gotcha ugh. she doesn't have it I know, but, but just no. I'm, all... no, I'm not. I'm not I, I judging her. I'm, I'm just, saying, just, just as a piece of information. It was like it's a thing that they it's do. Like, it's so much so that it was like reclip, and I, I, I was like, what? Yeah, every day they come home with something Gotta... like that that they're dealing with, and you just, I can't even. I, I've gotten to the point where. I feel like I'm trying to push the river to keep them safe. I'm going to start every way, a all the time. Save the Kids Foundation. I, love I need it. to I'll per donate. I need to personally heal <laughs> an entire generation and I can do it too. Because there's about like I would say about 15 out of the 15 out of 100 that they they just love me because they're desperate for someone who like tell them the truth because yeah. they have smoke blowing up their ass at all times. So uh, I could start with them and see if I could have them proselytize as a child army. One of the crusades was led by a child army. Just because it didn't work in 1257 doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean it can't work in 2024. Well, they're looking for that and they're finding they, it in they, guys they like are, Andrew so, Tate. They're so, yes, they're so really desperate for, for guidance. Stuff up. Yes, right. That's right, people like that. They are looking for it, they're well, desperate for this it. This was also in the news. Thirty point difference between young liberal women, uh, young women and young men, liberal to conservative. Women are, th young women like 20s, we're talking about teens and 20s, 30 points more liberal than the boys, because the boys, right, are into into Andrew Tate and- Because we're systematically emasculating them. Right, that's a lot of it, yes. The, that's the- <clears throat> And in now, do you some have a boy cases, also? I have a boy. Do you have a boy? How, no, how, the boy is how old? He's about to be 12. He's about to be 12. And, and where'd you find him? <laughs> My ex had him, actually. Oh. So she did, you know, she created him. And, um, and uh, our daughter. Oh, she had him? Like, she gave okay. birth to him, yeah. And, uh, and when, you, when you adopted your daughter, did you specifically ask for a, a black baby? Nope. Or No? It was so, just, you said- so uh, like uh, no, so I can tell you how we ended up um, finding Lou because we literally did find her. Uh, and the long and short of it is, I went on safari in 2010. Didn't think I wanted safari. To be there. What country? Where were we? We were all over Tanzania? Botswana. Botswana. Um, wow. Botswana. Nice. I'm going to Tanzania in 2025 with wow. kids, but really, that was Botswana, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. And we were at Victoria Falls. Yes. Uh, rafting the Zambezi. Huge mistake. Wow. Don't recommend it. And the long and the short of it is, Don't after worry. All, almost dying in the Zambezi, <laughs> that's not going to happen. We no. opted out of I, the. I, uh, uh, I don't go east of La Brea. Okay, fair. Yeah, yeah this, no. this, this, I would encourage you, but maybe <laughs> no, not. Maybe not I am the Zambezi. not a world traveler. I, uh, yeah. but I've seen the pictures of Victoria Falls, and I that, it sufficed Beautiful. for me. Unbelievable. Beautiful. I did like the log, biggest falls in the world. I, I, th think, I think that's Venezuela, it, actually. Oh, believe okay. it. I it's could one, be it's one of the Falls. Biggest I think one. maybe. I mean, is it where the Nile ends? Is that where? Mm -mm. Is, or, or is it the? Is it the? It's I mean, the mouth of the Nile is it, no. Mm -mm. Okay. It's um something. It's between, literally, right between Zambia and Zimbabwe, and it's called the cataract. Cataract. Uh, cataract. Sorry. And you jump in and you get in this raft. And to make a very long story short, it's like one of the most dangerous. I had no idea, by the way. I was booked for me by a travel agent. <laughs> And I thought I was going to be on a jungle boat cruise with a drink. And the next thing you know, I'm in a level five rapid called the gnashing jaws of death. 
I, they're, they're choppering people out. It was a shit show. So we did not continue on with the day's activities after climbing out of this gorge at Rapid you, 10. But do you do adventurous things like this all I the time? I do. This one was... Like how often? Are you, in the, like four times a year you do something... Like, all the time. All the time. Like every month? I, you're I doing just take the like kids uh, to go shark diving with Ocean Ramsey. Shark diving. Now, what's the point? This is the point. Okay. First of all, I'm a big ocean lover. Grew up here. Sure. Um, oceans. The kids coming out. I don't listen. Okay. To teach, to teach my kids two things. One, about conservation. And two, not to have fear of sharks when they're in the water, but to also understand how to be smart Right? What's going to make a shark attack? When are you acting like prey? Is the water murky? All these different things. Can't we have both? Can't we teach them these things and also still have fear of sharks? Because I feel like fear of sharks is not a terrible instinct at all. I, I don't think it's... Really? I don't think it's reasonable. Sharks are not worthy of being feared? Do you know how many shark attacks there are in a year? With like 120? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah, are... but they're not all in the ocean. Bill, how many people... Google this. I did this with my kids. No. Billions of people go in the ocean multiple times, right? Yes. No, uh, every I, I, year. I agree. You had a better chance of getting killed by a toaster and shit, coconut. Yeah, right. like, I know. I agree. Like it's, I agree. It's right. I'm just saying, if I saw a fin in the water, my first thought wouldn't have been, wouldn't be, oh, nothing. I would be like, oh, fear, yes. Now, be smart about your fear. Don't go thrashing about. Right. Exactly. Or, you know, Make eye contact. Don't act like prey. Eye contact. With those dead eyes? I don't think... Really? You think you can make eye contact with a shark? Yeah, absolutely. Really? I think you need to have and ocean what would your, your, would, My eyes would say, please don't hate, eat me. <laughs> what, would your, what, 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 what are you saying with your eyes? You're just making eye contact. Really? You think a shark is seeing your oh, eyes? Oh, 100%. They see that good? They Sharks? utilize... Uh, this, I, this comes from Ocean Ramsey, mind you, wow. who we just went diving with. She's unbelievable in uh, Oahu. But you make eye contact with the shark. Really? And they teach you what to do. Like, if they come towards you, because I'm a big scuba diver. Right. Um, I love, love jet skis and jet surfs and all kinds of water stuff. Um, do they know sign language of any kind? You put your fins out. Your fins. These you put are your, your fins, fins out in oh, front of you. Right. And if they continue to approach them, you, you strong arm and really? you gently guide, push down on their nose and guide them away. Obviously, you're gonna, you're not probably not going to have this happen. But I scuba a lot. I've <laughs> scuba with schools of sharks. I've never had an cut, issue. Cut to in real life doing this, and my arm in the mouth no! up to the elbow, <laughs> and then the teeth coming down, and no! just just the stump of my arm coming out, no. like the, the guy on the beach and never. And, Saving private Mistaken Ryan. identity, surfers in murky no, no, water I, I, once in a blue moon. Okay. Well, and I, the, I, I, and, uh, hold on. You're a badass. Now you swim with and sharks, I, and it redefines who you are. You're like, I faced down this fear <laughs> as safely as possible. As safely it redefines as possible. who you are. I'm telling Chum. you. No. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Let's start with getting you south of La Brea or whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> East of La Brea. Hey, where the fuck we're going? No. Let's get you out of the house. No, I, Although I, with this I mean, place, I've never, never been a world traveler, but I have, I've been, you know, to a few cities and a few places, and uh, I feel like I've done enough, and, you know, 68, I'm totally okay. I have, people have a bucket list. I have a list of shit I don't do anymore, and it's just a great list. <laughs> like Christmas, you know, no gifts, no nothing. It's like, I just don't do it anymore. Things like that. It's it's awesome. And that's one of them. It's like, it was always very stressful for me to travel it's, overseas, yeah, you know, and some people take the stress better. And we're talking about stress with health. It was just what you, you could, they could offer me to unlimited amount of money to play in Dubai. And sometimes they no, do I, offer American entertainers or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I bet. And I'm like, it's not worth it. Not, big, not Nothing against you, Dubai, but Dubai, I'm not just, go, I'm just not going, I'm it, just not leaving. Why bother? Yeah, yeah I just, no it's upside. too far yeah. and too, too many things could happen that my febrile mind would be thinking could happen. And uh, I don't want to, you know, I just... Uh, but it doesn't compromise the quality of your life. Not at all. Yeah, if it did, then I'd be like, oh, Bill, you know, I don't know, buddy. But it sounds like you're perfectly happy. Um, you're clearly exactly. thriving. There's right. no I mean, reason to do that. Great. I mean, there are terrible things about aging. And then 
But your actual life, I mean, I'm speaking for everybody, I mean, but I know a lot of people my age would say the same thing. Your actual life is better because you're not a fucking idiot anymore. <laughs> you're not self-sabotaging yourself, which is, I think, a lot. I know, for me, what made me unhappy a lot in my younger decades was, like, mad at myself for dumb relationship choices, mm. dumb career choices, dumb shit that was avoidable and unforced errors. But do you think... See, you're learning from your mistakes, right? Which is what we're supposed to do. But sometimes I find mm. people don't, they don't have the ego strength. It takes years. It takes, that's why it doesn't happen in your 20s. You have to, I mean, I think learning is mostly about patterns. You know, you see something come around once and that's, oh, it's the first time you saw it. You're going to like, I mean, the first time I got dumped, you know, it was like, of course, the worst ever in my life because you don't see it coming and it's the, uh, and will, I, <laughs> will I ever be happy again? And the second time it happens, like, okay, I can deal with it. I dealt with it before. You know, that's a lot of what life is, you lessons and seeing the pattern. And so, you know, that's why I say Biden, not, I wish he would get out of the way for somebody younger, but... As far as could he, can he actually do the job? Yes, he can. He's not senile. And most of the decisions are made you in think the- he's not senile? He's not senile. Bill! Did you see the thing where he's like, oh, the Civil War and you needed more airports. And he's like, whoa! He's, you think he's not senile? He's not senile. But Bill. That's different. That's what is different. that then? It wasn't happening like that when he was yeah, Obama's it, it, VP. It, it doesn't, no, of course. He's a lot older and he shows it. It doesn't affect what matters. He doesn't, when they're talking in the Oval Office, first of all, he doesn't talk like that because he's not, he's just not, when you're old, no, you're honest. not confident talking he publicly. He's gone to me. He's not gone. But, the brain is not no. gone. The decisions, no. okay. Oh, do you all think right. he's making them? I don't think he's making them. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Of course he's making them. How? How? He literally just called uh, Trump the sitting president the other and day. And Trump just called, he did a whole rant. Did I just tell you Trump was mentally no, no, sound? I'm, I'm just, <laughs> uh, no, but he did the same thing. People get up in the upper years, and they, especially when you're like talking in public a lot, you know, it's going to happen. It doesn't affect. Oh, Bill. Okay. Don't give me Bill like in, on wait, this in this area. I'm the one who doesn't know shit. Okay. Maybe you don't. Uh, I'm not saying you video. don't know shit. No, but, I'm not claiming to know anything about politics. But, you're, you're, but watch the friggin' okay. videos of the guy. I've seen the videos. He can't get I'm, off the stage. I'm, that's not true either. You're. I've seen the videos. We've seen the same thing. The bicycle store. He doesn't know where he's at. It, it, that's. You think the guy knows? Okay, I mean, because uh, okay, point area explored. We have a difference of opinion. Fair. You can school me on it. I, tell I, me. I, nobody, tell nobody me. knows. I'm just telling you. When he's sitting alone, not alone, when he's sitting with advisors in the Oval Office, where the job is actually done, not in this arena, which has you so interested in, this shiny object. The when shiny he's object? It's the shiny object that is distracting you because you're not in the Oval Office. He looks demented. I, and I, I don't mean demented looks, crazy. Exactly, I mean like dementia. Looks, looks. In your opinion. Okay. I, I mean, to me, those are signs of dementia. Yeah, they both have some. Probably everybody does at that age. Probably everybody does. I mean, maybe do you ever any, walk into a room and you forget why you walked into the room? I think you there think, are well, degrees of this. Of course, and there are degrees. advanced on this exactly. spectrum. Exactly, and that's what we're talking about, degrees. You think the degree, I think, I think it's ridiculous. You apparently think I'm ridiculous. I don't think you're ridiculous. That's kind of your tone, yes, that I'm ridiculous to even think of this. Uh, I, I think I'm surprised we, that it doesn't alarm you. That's all. It doesn't. I don't think you're ridiculous. I'm. I'm I can't understand why it doesn't alarm you. What alarms me is that he's going to lose the election because this is how he looks in public. That's what alarms me. It doesn't alarm me. Like, what is he going to do when they come to him tomorrow? When he's in the Oval Office at 9:30 a.m., he's probably good, like a lot of people, especially at that age, in the morning. Don't get him in the afternoon. That's fine. We can do the pre we can do the business in the morning, uh, sir. There's the the bill that we're trying to get passed in the Senate, uh, the immigration bill that Trump is blocking. Uh, should we call Senator McConnell? Yes. And he gets on the... He can do that. He's still doing that. I know people who are very close. Okay. Okay. It's a whole different issue than what he looks like in public. The problem is the one affects the other. Do you think he's actually going to be the nominee? 
Of course. Really? That's a foregone conclusion. Really? You're asking me that question? I am. Because you know on the other well, side of Well, then you're the... not following it that closely. This is, a, this is a done deal. Okay. Biden's but hold a on. Done. Hold on. Has... I, I appreciate... I Listen. I... There's no serious people running against him, and now the primary season is underway. You know the We're rumors? already into the- The rumors is that even Dave Rubin and Megyn Kelly are talking about, that when they get to the Democratic nomina- nomination, he's going to, or the Democratic convention, and they, he's going to quietly be like, oh, you know what? Not going to do it. And then well, somebody will I mean, slot themselves in. Newsom, I mean, this is, this is pure conjecture. This is just people- <laughs> Making I'm shit, asking you because other respectable just, people in the news are suggesting it's a possibility. Uh, I like both Megan and Dave. They're respectable. But if this is what they're saying, and I don't know that it is, but if that's what you're they're I, saying, I believe there's you, a, a story being leaked. A story being leaked. But it's exactly. on both like, of their shows. They're definitely but, exploring but it. Use a little critical thinking on this. A story Even being Tucker leaked. Tucker says this, from, and I know you're going to say Tucker who, sucks, but I, I know you're going to say that about him. Well, he so does. And, <laughs> and, and these two have a lot of loony ideas ideas also, um, right-wing loony ideas. I like them both, and they're pretty, you know, Megan is much more, I think, center. Um, I mean, Dave's good, too. He, he's, uh, I think, turned on Trump, but um, they're definitely th- 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 this is just it. something they pulled out of their ass, and it's not going to happen. I'll bet you any amount of money. It was a rumor, I guess, that came out of... Um... That came out of an ass. <laughs> Okay, the kind but you, it's still the, on the kind you train. The show for people who are relatively You know credible. when you're leaning over somebody and going, do these, <laughs> another t- set of doggy dogs or whatever those thing is where you stick your doggy leg. Doggy dogs? Uh, what is it? What I've is, never asked for doggy <laughs> dogs. What is it when you stick your leg out like that when you're on your. Bird dog. No, like, you're, bird like dog. You're, no, you're, 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 you're building the muscle in your ass. Bird dog. Bird dog? Okay. Bird dog. Well, anyway. <laughs> That's where it came from. The came place from where the bird dog. dogs are working on. It's nothing. It's and it's not going to happen. He's okay. they're going to wheel him out, and it'll be a you know he'll be wearing as much makeup as Trump is by then. <laughs> and but he'll have they'll, if they're smart, what they'll do is write the speech like now because nothing's going to change. Write the speech now. Have him work on it like. Every day from now until the elect, till this convention, like is in July, and so it's like second nature to him. And so we can just, if people just see him make one like speech, like and it's off a teleprompter, he can do it. But he is a stutterer, you know. I mean, he is he is somebody working with like that. I've I've uh, heard that argument, and I understand. No, it. it's just but, part but of the let's equation. Let's go back ten years. Wasn't speaking like this. he wasn't. Again, no con- no argument. He looks awful. This is why I've been imploring the Democratic Party to do something and switch him out for somebody, but they're not going to do it. And that is not going to happen. The die is cast. It's the new year. The primaries have started. He is the nominee and will be unless he dies or is incapacitated. So that's a fact we have to all deal with now. How do you best deal with it? Teach him the speech now. That's my <laughs> number one plan. Teach him the speech now. Have him so it's like it's like the story about corn pop. You know, he's got these stories in his head that he likes to tell. And like it's because he's been telling them like any like like Borscht Belt hack. He's been telling them for years the same stories. And so like he that's his go-to. You gotta get it in his head a long time before. And then it's like his, oh, this is my go-to story. Yeah, I know this. And and it's like Bob Hope at the end. You just <laughs> You know, Bob Hope would never do a second take, so like, boy, make that monologue easy to say. As a layman, both of them alarm me. Oh, of course. And I, I, I think a lot of laymen like myself but are you, kind you, of shocked. But that you would vote is, for Trump over Biden, perhaps? I didn't perhaps? vote last time, and I probably wouldn't vote this really? time. Really? Really? You don't see a difference enough between I, Biden and Trump? I don't like Biden at all, either. I get it, but that's, wow. I, Here's my other, like, some of the things. I'm curious about this one for you. I'm not there. Some of the things that are so alarming about Trump, you're going to say I'm crazy, but I see similarities. People often are like, Trump's a racist. I'm like, so is Biden. No, he's not. Like, well, he made racist remarks about Obama. He was homies with Strom Thurmond. He eulogized the guy. He's responsible for putting more people of color in prison with the 94 crime bill. Like, this is your fucking hero, this guy? 
I think it's very important that Tell we, me. Tell me I, I'm wrong. I, no, I, I don't... I, I, this is just... What I'm going to say, I think it's very important that we listen to both left and right wing uh, media sources because I don't trust anybody fully. They both, I've said this many times, they, but they tell you they're feeding a narrative. They're, they're, they're stroking the audience first. 100%. They want to, they want to tell the audience left and right. But having said that, you think there's a I think you're evil. listening to too much right wing bullshit these days. I do. I think you're listening to a lot of right wing. So you don't think this guy, all that uh, stuff that he's done that I just listed I mean, is like, I think, I think, I think it's like, I, I just the, you think the, the whole the, thing I with his son Biden. is totally innocent? No, I, I don't think any of it's innocent it. or completely wrong. It's just it's just like boring because it's like yeah, if you want to, if, 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 if you want, if you and if, completely nefarious you, with Trump, if you want to play the game of picking out somebody who's been in public life for 50 years and who's not a perfect human being, as none of us are. But then you have, and like, but, but, and then, like, but they crucified Trump about, for the same like, shit. That's what I'm saying. You know, did he work with Strom Thurmond? Yes, he was in the Senate. It's just such a dumb right-wing talking point. Yeah. There's no truth in it. It's just- What about the fact that he said, oh, yeah. well, we got a colored guy that's, uh, yes, you know, is a again, clean and again, smart. It's again, a fairy tale. Yes, again. Really? Again, no. you're, if Trump you're, said you're, that, we would all be like, holy you're, shit. You're, you're so exaggerating the importance of something like that, is my view of, of, of no, your... I, I felt this way about so him. So it's like... When you're, he was you're selected take, as Obama's VP. It's like, this is, this is, this is you're, you're reacting to talking points, which is what they want you to do. I, I, oh, I, to me, like, there's no I think, con contest between what your issues are with Biden, which are issues... They're minor. It's like you, I feel like you understand this on a physiological level. If we talked about the human body and the difference between dandruff and pancreatic cancer, you would get that. But in politics, I feel like it's very similar, but you're not, but you're not there with the politics. You just like Biden, when, when somebody rubs people the wrong way, Hillary, well, 75 million people uh, yeah, don't I, like them. So uh, are those, maybe they also know dandruff and pancreatitis. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but half the country well, is not. I don't I, like I, either of them, by the, the way. Country, I'm not a Trumper. First of all, half the country always hates whoever is the other party's president. Hates. That's a given. It doesn't end. Really? Um, what I'm saying is you're working backwards from. I hate him. I don't to hate like, him. Now, why do I hate him? Because he worked with Strom Thurmond on a bill like every senator I, did. I don't like, hate him. And then I don't like, like Gavin Newsom Because his son more. is a fuck. <laughs> and, you know, like, he's got a million fucking pockmarks okay. marks what, what on would him. Be, it's like, what would be your thought? This is one I, I feel like it speak a little bit. On, it's not. It doesn't rise to the level of the hate you have for him. I don't hate him. It's, I don't but, like him. But it's him. like. I don't, I don't like him. Yeah, I don't I get think it. he's great at his job. Yeah, he's just, he does seem to be incredibly senile. But I do think you've been uh, listening to a lot of right wing. I listen to both. I feel like I watch you all the time. Well, I'm not right wing, <laughs> but I'm. A, I'm saying. I but I say a lot know. of the things right wingers appreciate me saying about how stupid the left is. You call it like you see. Yes, it. I do. Well, okay. Can I ask you? But, uh, what but, do you think uh, but, of Gavin Newsom? I just had him on my show. I know. Uh, I thought uh, you were a little I, soft there. Thought uh, you could have gone a little harder on the guy. Um, like you yeah. brought up almonds, well, you nailed him on that. But he's taking money from Big Ag Bill. That's why he didn't like. Oh yeah, that's a, yeah almonds. Anyway, I'm building desalination plants. You're taking tons of money from Big Ag, which is why almonds are still in California. That's true. I didn't know what the. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Uh, I didn't know what the answer to that is. That's the uh, answer. Or like, how come PG&E was allowed to get away with the 2018 fires? One of the top well, contributors to know, his kick. I mean, I've got like 12 minutes at the top of the show to cover the whole world. Uh, I wasn't about to like make it all about the almonds. You know, uh, <laughs> the, the fact that I brought up the, the fact that I brought up the almonds all right, okay, is something touche. nobody touche, else would, my would friend, even touche. fucking do. Okay, you're right. You're uh, right. So you're right. I'm, I'm all right on that one. You, but, you're good. But I've been trying to get Gavin to run for president for a very long uh, time. And are you serious? Uh, are we living in Gavin Newsom's California? Why? Yeah, and I'm sure your life is just a I nightmare. I left because of him. Oh right, you're Moved in Florida. Moved to Miami. It's so you know what? I'll tell you something. Lived here my in whole 2020, life. 2020. I I I've lived here since '83. Okay. And I love where I live. I love California. I, lived I in mean, Malibu. I, I'm dug in here. I did in 2020 
when there was a week when the sun was blotted out from the sky because of fires, I did look at moving to Florida. Now, I think it was a little like when I was contemplating high, uh, suicide when I was in <laughs> high school and college. If I got laid once, I would stop to kind of, and I don't think I was ever really going to do it. Um, but I did actually, or get married. You know, I was engaged once, but you know, there are things you, you, in your life you're like, you know what, I might do that. And part of you is like, yeah, never going to do that. Okay. So, I mean, and I think moving to Florida is in that category, but I did look at it because I share your frustrations with California. Okay. I do. And I, that, those are the things I was saying to him. I mean, this is one the I things, think I could pretty, I could speak to again, pretty, pretty you, eloquently. But are you happier in Florida? Yeah. What, what, what is it in Florida that's, that's over, that compensated more than what you had here? It feels less crazy than it does here. Here you just- Florida's like, less crazy? Yeah. Hear me out. Hear me out on this. <laughs> really? Here's the place what I mean. where the people are but, okay, what, on bath salts, like fucking girl, an alligator? Sage Steele asked me, she's like, what was the moment when you felt like California had lost its mind? And it was a piece of legislation that I, I can't recall. Did it affect your life? But Bill, did it affect your is life? Is the crime affecting our lives? Is, is the it, homelessness is crime, affecting our was lives? Was crime affecting your life? My, here yeah, in California? absolutely. My house got broken into. Your house got broken into. Yes, and guess what? The relationship with PG and E. My house burned down in 2018. Where's your house? I, I lived in Malibu. <laughs> Malibu. Montal, yeah. You got wow. You got broken into in Malibu. I got. <laughs> Things so, are rough out there. No, they, like, our, oh, and it, it was so nuts. I'm and guess who, Trump. Let, guess who let the guy out during COVID? Because I got the letter. Newsom. It was the guy's third offense. He broke into our house. He had duct tape and a video camera. Anyway, long story. But he third strike. Guy goes to jail. Gets let out during COVID. I mean, give me a fucking break. You're not going to hold PG&E accountable for that fire in 2018. Yeah. You're going to decriminalize everything but regulate nothing. You're prioritizing the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Well, like, come on. Really? Again, my thing with Gavin is, first of all, he can win. Uh, first of all, I just like him. Uh, oh. I think he's really smart. Really? Is he a politician? Yes. That's the... Uh, Hello, Paula, is he slick? Good. I'm fucking glad he's slick. Slick people win elections. Clinton was slick. Obama was pretty How slick. How do you feel about the way he handled Good. COVID? We, not California for, was the not last for it. state to reopen. Not, not for it. Shut it's, the schools forever. Not, not, not for it. Mind you, with no mask on at the French laundry after saying oh, that you see, can't. Again, you are just... I think you've been captured by this. No, I haven't. This he's is a what, hypocrite, this is what, and that bothers this, me. The rules were absurd. Okay. You could okay, Bill. I know, but it's Bill, like it's like they were really absurd. You're, you're, you're obsessing I'm not, again though. about what the, was done the, right. You're obsessing about the dandruff. If he was he a went to the wrong restaurant, really, Bill, this is it, he like didn't again follow his own rules. Get, if you're going to be I a leader, it. you lead by example. That's not fucking dandruff. If he was the COO of a company, wasn't there like there's a two, ninety this two choices. billion dollar? I can almost guarantee whoever he's going to run against from the Republican Party, although every time I make the decision independently, I must guarantee that I will think he's smarter, better at government, which Republicans don't even take seriously. They don't know how government works. Democrats are at least wonks. They actually know how government works. It's actually very complicated. You have to study it. It's arcane. It takes a lot of people in a lot of rooms at three in the morning with boxes of stale pizza and coffee and making and crafting laws that you'll never read but affect your life, people who actually really get things done. Okay. Is he that kind of person? Yes, I think he is. And generally, we're on the same page philosophically. Is he too far woke? Absolutely. And I've said that to him many times, and I hope that when he, if he runs a president, one of the good effects of it, it will move him necessarily to the center, which I would like to see him more. But compared to what they're putting forth on the can other can side- Can we talk about DeSantis outside of his social positions? I mean, You're talking what about if the you coffee need an, and the-, the, the, and you the think, you, Could you envision a day when you would need an abortion in your life? Okay, still? let's, I, I said other still, than the social issues, you still but let's have discuss a baby? it. Hold on, could initially- Could you still have a baby? I, maybe, I still get my period, maybe, not in menopause yet. But There you go. But hold on, I agree okay. with you. I said outside of the social pregnant. issues, but let's hold on. Your girlfriend gets you pregnant. I mean, hold you <laughs> on. Initially, his position before he ran and got pushed all the way to the right was 15 weeks. I agree with 15 weeks. Right. 
15 weeks well, to me is plenty of time. Europe is 12. 15 weeks, 12 weeks, it's all a fucking joke to me because either you believe in this shit or you don't. I Bill, uh, there's like, nuance. You can't make it black and white like that. Of course you can. No, you you're can't. Talking about, it's not that simple. You believe, a late-term look, abortion, they're anesthetizing the child and taking it apart in I, pieces it, but as I mean, opposed to... There's you, a certain, on a certain level, <laughs> if you think it's murder... And here's my position. It's a continual, I mean, I, it's shades of I gray. I do think it's murder, and I'm completely okay with it. That's my position. Like, but it is definitely becoming a life. So if you're okay, to be like, well, it would be barbaric to kill it at <laughs> eight weeks, but, okay, but, have but to six, of course. You anesthetize the fetus and cut it into pieces. Yeah. Like, come on. There's a continuum. Yeah, the one, where that's it, worse, but it's still, but, you're can, still, can you, you're then still why stopping Then why in Europe this, is it 12 weeks? Okay, why? But, and but no one like, seems to have a problem with that. As soon as you get pregnant, you know, it's like the raft that's going down the river and it's going to get to the falls. Now, you can kill it before it gets to the falls, but if you don't, it would get to the falls and then drop out of the lady and become a human. Yeah, at which, again, does not bother me at all. I think we have too many humans already, <laughs> and I feel like if if we never met you, you can't miss us, and we can't miss you because we never met Somewhere you. Somewhere between conception and birth, there is a continuum. And the answer, truthfully, no one's yeah. going to get everything they want here, is somewhere in the middle. His initial proposition was 15 weeks. That seemed fair to me. You get birth control. You get the morning after pill. You get rel four, four months. I'm like, okay, Europe's 12. I can live See, with four months. <clears throat> Six is absurd. I agree. The and we got pushed there. The problem is, I noticed when Gavin was on the show uh, a week ago, I noticed like the girls around the office that day a little more makeup. That's dandruff. That's your dandruff. No, no. I mean, that is your bullshit right there. That's not the point. That's not the, it's, not it's, the meat and it's, potatoes. Calm down. It's not the point I'm making. I'm not making a point. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying something. Okay. When he did the show, you know, girls wearing a skirt today, hmm, a little more makeup. I'm just saying he, uh, you know, as a politician, it doesn't hurt to have that effect on half the people who are voting. And I'm guessing he doesn't have that effect on you. I, I can't stand him. Oh, I understand. But he does I, all it, of these insane things. He doesn't do insane things. But, oh my God, he Bill, does. There's things. a law that he passed. Yes, yeah, I know. A, You're right. Insane. Come, how many, I, how I, many I, of them do you want? I can, he's approving Bill. You know what? I confronted him. Puberty blockers I, I, for 12 year olds. Okay, he, I could not agree come more. Come on, Bill. I'm not, you don't have to come on me. But, but, I've been but on to this. me, this is insane. You're telling me it's dandruff. I'm, I'm telling you it's not. That kind of stuff. Is not that's that's real stuff. I confronted him on the one uh, the department uh, store. The department I store. I saw. He's like, ah, oh, they wanted it. No, <laughs> if they say well, they didn't, everyone's gonna call them transphobic, so or gay phobic. No, focus on other shit, bro. You've got real yeah. problems oh, here. No. California is a crazy state. But again, you know, it's almost analogous or is analogous to the two party thing. You only get two choices. You know, uh, and also like wherever you move, um, no, you you session. seem to have liked, like you seem to have adopted well to Florida. But I think it's because, you know, you have this. I you maybe you're focusing so much on theoretical things that you, uh, you know, I don't know. I've been to Florida. I love Florida. It's one of the states I really love. Okay. But I know if I move there, uh, I'd be there in like July. Going, are you fucking kidding <laughs> me? I, I purposely went here. This this you weather get a is. Home. Is disgusting. Second home, and they, they, they have like their roaches fly, which you know. I never had a flying roach in my house. Iguanas. Okay, yes. but they do have like you know. What I'm saying is, every <laughs> place when you move there, you find out some shit you did, you're not going to like. So you might as well get you know the devil you know. As long as the devil is California. Now, if I was I was in Alaska or something in the winter, yes, okay, but you know, and also. You know, I don't know what crazy shit. You think this state is crazy? I think Florida is the state that where I I think is more like this. The Do you think the rules? I just think are people crazy. go go. Like meaning the laws, the way it's run, uh, the what I love burning about, and that shit. I don't know what. What I love hell. about I, he's definitely lost. I, at first, when I got to Florida, I was able to defend the. Don't say gay bill, which is really no, the parental I, I rights there, and education. I act. went there in 21 when the I, pandemic was still going on, and I felt so much freer 
like while I was in Florida that weekend, then I, at that point in California, and I do, I fucking hate that about California. But again, it's like, I could make an analogy to, to a relationship. Do you love everything about your partner? No, it's, it's a pro Straight and con. No. And for yeah. me personally, I'll tell you one thing that I do think you would love about Miami. Or I'll say Miami because that's where we live. I love Miami. I'm playing there in March. Oh, oh. what a, ah, for once. <laughs> An actual genius segue, February 16th and 17th, I will be in Las Vegas at the David Copperfield Theater at the MGM Grand, March 2nd in Houston at the Hobby Center, March 3rd in El Paso, the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, and I happen to know, and then I have to put on a card, March 23rd in Miami. Da, 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 da. So, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I have to go, is that Yeah, it? because I have my real show to prepare oh, for. Oh shit, like, that's right. Okay, I wanted to get you back. here for so long. You did not disappoint. You are everything I thought you would be. Uh, like, I mean, what, yeah. what we call, no. Dandruff obsessed? No, what we, call, <laughs> what we call easy day for a talk show host, because you're a great talker. You have a lot to say. You say it with passion. And you know your shit, at least about health, which is what I care, care I'd say, way. I'd say you, get, you had a couple of gimmies on California. <laughs> okay. Definitely had a couple of gimmies there for me. Well. Thank you. It was yeah, such hug. a pleasure. All right. Me too. I'm so excited to have finally me, met you. Yeah, I me too. I guess I do that whole thing about uh, the alkalinity. You know, yes, can't please. Love it. I'm, you can never bore me with health. Just, just you got to sort of boil it down. Clarendo.